Hello, this is Piotr speaking on part 4 of uh, 2020 update of uh, Quasar Training on Linux. Um, in the previous part, we we added a few cache variables to, to our intelligent motor class, uh, which was called Moto. And um, those were kind of um, um, kind of unconnected variables, just variables in, in the memory um, of the server. Um, not only exposing um, any information yet, and in this part, uh, we'll see how, how we actually use uh, cache variables to perform information exchange between the server and the clients. Um, so we added two cache variables, and um, the value of cache variables can be changed from inside of the server. So that means that you can publish new information from inside of the server um, and the clients that keep monitoring given variable will receive a data change notification with the new value and the clients performing reads will get the new value on the next read transaction. Now I'm speaking here from uh, using the term inside of the server and what does this actually uh, mean? Um, so the server, probably majority of the source code making up the server uh, is delivered and generated by Quasar, but of course you'll be adding your own parts. And by saying inside, it will be from the parts that you will write, uh, that the data will be pushed into the other space, and then uh, from the other space using OPC way will be distributed to, to the clients. Um, that of course holds for the opposite direction. So whenever clients uh, right to the other space, you can read from inside of the server. And here comes a, a, a crucial part. So for every Quasar class, absolutely every Quasar class that you have in your design, Quasar makes a dependent C++ class called uh, other space class. And this other space class is a proxy class which hides the OPC way specific code from you, giving you a nice and clean interface to, to operate the information of, um, of that class. Let's have a look. I'm in my Eclipse project, um, where I left off in the, in the previous part. And um, this is my design, of course. Uh, but I was uh, I was telling you that for every class that we have in the design, and uh, you remember we had this class called Motor, that we have a, an address space class. Now, where do I find this class? This class, of course, is a generated class that it gets created on on the server build. Uh, so I'll find this in into uh, in the build directory, and then into other space classes. I can see something called AS Motor. If you don't see that. It means you either did not build uh, the server or rebuild after design change, or you did not refresh. Uh, so try F5 or whatever is your Eclipse shortcut. Anyway, you have a you have a class called AS Motor, and um, this class has a couple of very important methods, and uh, especially so-called setter methods. So set rotational speed. Now, why do I have? Uh, something like this set rotational speed because I declared a cache variable called rotational speed which was supposed to be double so therefore Quasar is exposing to you a method called set rotational speed that takes a, a new value and a new status code and maybe optionally source time if you if you wish to not to have it, uh, the default one um, to actually publish this information to uh, to the other space such that the clients will um, get an update. Which means um, that you have to invoke this method, put the new value, put the new status code, and your clients will see the new publication. So quite simple, I think. Uh, but then the question um, can be asked, how do I actually invoke it and from where do I invoke it? Because here we spoke speaking about a class called AS Motor. The question is how do we actually get a pointer or a reference to this class such that you could call this uh, function? So we're going to um, to how the code is organized. And here um, another important concept enters, which is called device logic. Um, Device logic is a recommended way to organize 
uh, custom code, which is relevant or specific to given Quasar class. So if I have a Quasar class called motor, and I know how to obtain the information or um, from from the motor controller or how to pass the information to the motor co motor controller, then it's recommended that I keep that information. I write my source code in the device logic of the motor class. So, um, how do I create a device logic class? I have to declare it. So I add child pack class called device logic. That's the first step. And then I create this class manually by using Quasar tool. So I get where I go to where my my project is and I and I do generate device and the name of the class which is motor in this case. Voila. And now what I did is I asked Quasar to generate a skeleton, right? I, I asked um, Quasar to generate the skeleton of the device logic and where I will place my um, custom code specific to the motor class. Where do I find device logic? There is a, a, a di directory um, in, the, in the project and inside Include, uh, until you refresh, you will see nothing probably. But then when you refresh, you will see the file which we just generated. This is the header. This is the body. And both of these files you will um, kind of maintain. Okay? Now, this part is split into uh, kind of two parts. So this is a part which Quasar makes and maintains. And there's a part which you... Um, which you where you put your own things, which is below below this current custom code. Quasar knows how to sort this out. Um, the same goes for the actual body. And um, what I don't like is I see few unresolved dependencies of uh, by Eclipse. And why is this? Oh, well, because here we requesting a base uh, class which is simply not existing yet. So we have first to uh, build our server. Okay, so the server is built and um, we can go to build um, device, um, I think generated um, such that, and so now Eclipse has found the file, uh, so it will be much, much easier for us to work in Eclipse. Okay. Um, so let's recap here. Now we have our device logic class, and we said that this is where we put our custom code, which will push new information about the motor class to the other space. How do we do that? The recommended way is to add a method called update. And whenever this method will be called, or whenever this method is called, um, it will perform information exchange between the address space and whatever is your source or sync of information regarding given motor. So now I'll add the body of this class. And so I'm now I'm now I'm inside now I'm inside the implementation. So here I should know how how can I um, get the information about the motor in this particular um, situation we added a cache variable called rotational speed. So how do I get the information about the rotational speed is, um, is, is what you will put here in, the, um, in device logic. So let's say um, for the moment that we use just a random function because we don't have yet any, any real source of information. What I want to rather focus on is how you publish in the other space. So you'll find somewhere in this device logic a method called get address space link. Now, this method returns a pointer to this class. You remember, this is the class we've been looking at before. So this is the address space class, which has proxy methods to manipulate the contents and information of, of this particular um, address space object. So 
I believe it becomes now quite simple to you that when I get the pointer to this class, I can actually call um, a method to set this rotational speed and it expects some um, the new value. So let's say I'll randomize it and um, I will publish it as good. And voila, that's it. Okay, so it means in device logic, I obtain the information, I push it to the address space, and the address space pushes it um, into OPC UA, um, OPC UA specific representation of information. So um, let's see if it builds. Okay, and um, now the question is, um, how do I actually, or who actually calls this? Um, method uh, called update. Now, uh, there's a couple of ways, um, but um, the basic method which you should use is that you will call this yourself from the server main loop. So apart from device logic, which we covered in this point, um, Quasar developers should be aware that you also put your own source code in the main loop, or you are allowed to do that, you don't have to, but you are, allow you are allowed to do that, in the main loop of the server, as well as the server initialization and server shutdown. And all of them you'll find into server source at quasarserver.cpp. So if you go here, server source quasarserver.cpp, and then you find something like main loop initialize shutdown. You are very much invited to put your stuff here. Okay, so um, here by default you find some uh, while loop uh, which um, every here in every hundred milliseconds is trying to um, well it's, it's basically an infinite loop or almost infinite uh, until somebody shuts the server down. Yeah, here. So uh, my intention now is to call update method of the motor such that new information will be pushed to the other space every, in this case, um, roughly 100 milliseconds. How do I do that? Well, the question now becomes, how do I actually get uh, any reference or pointer to the specific motor? Because I can have many motors declared in, in the other space. So what I will do is I will simply invoke this update method on all, absolutely all uh, motors declared in the server. How do I do that? Um, so we have something called device root, which I'd like to, it's probably I did not refresh my Eclipse information. So I go here, exactly. So now it should be able to see it up, oh, no. Okay, I don't know why, but we'll, will be able to use it, I'm pretty sure. Um, so what we can do is, we can get instance of something called device root, which roughly corresponds to what we saw in the, in our diagram as that. Okay, so the parents, like the main, like the master parent of everything that is in the specific instance of the Quasar server. Now we have, a, we can get um, in every Quasar server, we can get an instance of a device root. And then what we can do is we have per every class that is a child of root, we'll have a, a method that returns us the collection of those device classes, sorry, device objects. So since we're talking about motor, we have a method called motors, okay? Which, as you will see, returns some, so, some sort of a vector. So now to nicely iterate over it, I will include my motor because I will like to, to call a method um, from the motor and what I'll do a range based um, for in C++. So I do device motor, say, say like that in the motors. And I do motor 
update. Does it make any sense? I think it might. Okay. So what I want to do, in other words, I have a seven main loop, just to reiterate on this. I have the seven main loop. I want to keep the main loop because it has some sort of event that is happening every 100 milliseconds. I want to get all declared motors, which as you remember, the config file was M1 and M2 in this case, and I want to call update on them. On them. And then when I call update on every one of them, it will set the rotational speed to something which is random. Okay, let's have a look. Let's, uh, let's try to build the server. Okay. And let's try to now run the server. Okay. And let's try to see what is happening in the other space. So I have my M1, M2, why? Because I put two instances of M1 and M2 in the server config file. And let's look at our rotational speed. And what I can see is some randomized values published from within the server. And the same should be happening on M2. Of course, those are different values because we called update on two different objects. But this is how you can publish information. So. A uh, small recap what we've been doing once again. Um, so we added the device logic to the class motor. The device logic is where you should put um, a source code which knows how to obtain information about the motor or how to take the information from the other sp space and pass it to the motor. And then we use the server main loop which has uh, some sort of infinite loop uh, with a delay of 100 milliseconds. So every 100 milliseconds, we call update method in the device logic, and the device logic takes a random value and pushes it, pushes, uh, it to the other space. And of course, in uh, not a sample project, but in a real OPC server project, inside this update method, you would have something uh, that takes the actual value from hardware or from network or whatever that is, and publishes the actual value to the other space. Um, okay, so the last thing I'd like uh, I'd like to do with you is since we now added a few files, especially device logic classes, um, I'd like to show you um, how you can. Um, take care of keeping good consistency of your project, because as you remember, in the part one of this uh, tutorial, we um, we added uh, some, some we put, we've put it under a Git version control. So if you if you look at current Git status, you'll see, uh, well, you have a few new files, uh, but also the files which, uh, well, maybe should be under version control, but not. So you can actually ask Quasar to actually help you with that. So you do quasar-py check consistency minus ask, and it's actually telling you that maybe the files that should be put under version control, like the motor or the motor and also the Eclipse files and maybe gitignore and stuff like this. Um, so you can help yourself using this tool. And then you, you of course, do um, git commit, uh, add everything with the message, let's say, after part four. Voila. Thank you for your attention. Uh, that was part four and see you in part five.